Most uh, people, when they talk, they talk yes. about, I mean, they're talking about a sense of despair in the land. They're talking about a sense of, like, a loss of hope of some sort, uh, like a disillusionment. I don't know if you have heard that being said or if you felt that around. Maybe it's just in certain quarters. Uh, so much so that people are now beginning to say, where are we coming from? Was it so bad in the past? Is this the kind of uh, system of governments that we should have? Some people are saying, look, even under the military rule, we had better infrastructure development. They talk about all the bridges that were built in Lagos and, and so and so. Even Abuja, uh, you know, was developed largely under the military government, sadly. Um, those are the kinds of things that you now begin to hear people say. They talk about security, for instance. So people are beginning to examine more the system of government that they have and are asking, is this what they really want? Well, no doubt, like I said, there are challenges, of course. Mm -hmm. The challenges of underdevelopment, the challenges of security and what have you. But like I said, these challenges are, can be surmounted, mm -hmm. of course, with the right kind of leadership, with the right kind of followership also. The challenges can be you know, overcome. Yes, people are disillusioned as a result of you know, maybe the poor state of the economy, but that doesn't take away the fact that democracy is a work in progress in Nigeria and of course anywhere in the world. Democracy is not an end in itself. It is a work in progress. It is a means towards achieving you know, the aspirations, the purposes and desires of the people. And Nigerians must stop to see democracy and you know, to see those things people brandish as dividends of democracy. Dividends of democracy go beyond infrastructure. Dividends of democracy include the freedom, the right that we all enjoy, of, and of course, equality. And when we talk about equality in democracy, we are not talking about e uh, uh, maybe economic equality. We are talking about equal access, equal opportunity for you and I, for anybody, irrespective of class, race, sex, to be able to achieve his or her aspirations unhindered. Equal access, political inclusion economic inclusion, social inclusion, and what have you. So those are the largest dividends of, of democracy? Of course, of course. That is what democracy offers. It goes beyond the infrastructure. It goes beyond what uh, the political elites call dividends of democracy. It includes this equality that we are talking about. Hmm. I'm going to quickly read from a paper uh, written by Adeyinka Teresa Ajayi and Emmanuel Oladipojo. They wrote a paper titled Democracy in Nigeria, Practice, Problems and Prospects. And they said that Nigerian democracy has three outstanding features. First, it is spendthrift. Nigerian democracy is a brand of democracy that spends so much to accomplish so little. They say, second, it invests in the comfort of officials rather than in human and material resources. In fact, the welfare of the common man occupies the bottom rung on the ladder of the priorities. And they also say that Nigerian democracy is plagued by hydra-headed and pathological corruption that ensures that the impact of any seeming good policy is either extremely negligible or almost exactly nil. First of all, do you agree with this statement? I think it's largely correct. As someone has, who has been in government, mm -hmm. um, I would admit that that is largely correct. Is this? the nature of democracy or is this the nature of how we've chosen to practice our own democracy it has nothing to do with democracy what what has just been read out actually has nothing to do with democracy it's it's the way that we run uh, our society and and those uh, those uh, circumstances where the same under the military they will be the same under a monarchy it's simply the way we run our society. Nothing to do with democracy at all. So that wasn't going to change even if we moved into a democratic system of government? The, 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 democracy, the democratic system of government uh, provides a particular tension with state building. And so democracy, most prosperous nations practice democracy, but democracy doesn't lead to prosperity. And you can have examples like China and some of the Southeast Asian economies and, you know, a lot of places that have developed and continue to develop without democracy. Uh, but what you have is democracy gives you certain freedoms um, which should then enable you to focus better on development. Um, but it's not a guarantee of development. So it doesn't matter what system of government we choose unless the structures we select are the right structures, 
it's not it's not going to make any difference well it's interesting because you headed the bureau of public service reforms at some point and you did that for quite a while how would you first of all describe the engagement of nigerians with the reform process i mean everybody agrees that we need to reform especially uh you know public service but they're not sure how and in some instances they've even given up before they've started um you can't actually blame them because uh, there's not enough reforms happening and, and it takes a while for people to actually start to believe that anything is changing. Um, governments successively have been quite poor at communicating what they're doing. So most people just keep their heads down and do it and they think the, the, the populace will see and appreciate it. Um, but actually a key element of, of reforms is communicating what it is you're doing, engaging with the citizens, letting them know why you're taking certain steps, how it will affect them, what benefits it has to provide for Do you them. think your work would have been easier? I mean, now you've left office with benefit of hindsight. If you were doing it under uh, an autocratic system of government instead of a, of a democratic one, for instance, that's an interesting point, actually. Um, the people have different approaches. My approach to, to doing reforms is, is actually to win hearts and minds mm -hmm. and, and to have the people believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of reforms that have been forced through have actually not been sustainable. I'm going to ask you this, uh, Dr. Eriki. You t wrote an academic article on political power alternation and the challenge of democratic stability in Nigeria. Then you're focusing on the Fourth Republic. Thankfully, we're still in the Fourth Republic, yeah. 1999 to 2013. That was when that article was written. Now, we've since held elections that have seen a peaceful transition from one party to another. How has this changed your perspective on our prospects for political stability? Because that's something you're very concerned about. Yes. Okay. Well, the argument was that um, for emerging democracies mm -hmm. to consolidate, there must be an alternation of power from one political party to another. We saw that in uh, emerging democracies in Africa, like Ghana. We have seen it in uh, uh, so many other African societies. But then it doesn't stop at that first alternation. You also, when you have a second alternation, you can begin to say that, yes, this democracy is stabilizing. And therefore, uh, with what happened in 2015, we can begin to say that uh, Nigeria is beginning, you know, to sustain, uh, you know, democracy in the country. But that it doesn't stop at that. Remember, we said you, we have to have a second alternation of uh, power between political parties. But this also, uh, you know, um, requires a lot of uh, a lot of things. For instance, institution building, as well as faith in the democratic process by the people. And I think one area Nigeria has a problem uh, is you know, building the institutions that sustain democracy, both formal and informal institutions, political parties, the executive, the legislature, and what have you. And then, of course, if you look at the relationship between the executive and the legislature over the years since 1999, it hasn't been... Uh, so, so good because they believe that they are running two different kinds of uh, government. I will let you expatiate a bit more on your thoughts when we come back from this break. And we'll also be talking about restructuring because nowadays when people talk about democracy, they tend to mention it side by side with restructuring. Details in a moment. Please stay with us. <laughs> 